and welcome back to Bookish Theories. Today we dive into Namjoon's brain to take a look at what's going on in his title track Lost. Co-written by Namjoon himself, Lost delivers a message of hope that even if you get lost, you might be okay with your friends. The song expresses his concerns regarding love, life, the passage of time, as well as the sadness, frustration and temptation that one might feel in the process of figuring out the right path for themselves. This is a great follow-up to the themes that we saw back in Come Back to Me, but even more so it's a great title track for an album like Right Place, Wrong Person. The album as a whole is dedicated to people who have lost their way, each in a different way, and it's a powerful exploration of feelings that one might experience in moments they feel out of place. If you ever feel like a stranger in your own life, Namjoon is here to tell you that you're not the only one. In fact, he sometimes feels like a stranger even within himself. In Lost, this concept is developed in a cinematic video directed by Opéry. The MV is set instead of Namjoon's brain, and it has a multi-layered narrative starring a Ram, a Ram, Namjoon, Red Monster, and also a Ram. Instead of the fictional framework of his mind, the first layer of the story takes place during the taping of a late night show called The Lost Show starring a Ram. Right off the bat, this seems to be a fun dig at the American talk shows and the fakeness of it all. The video makes a parody of the scripted nature of these shows, the fake excitement of the hosts, their awkward attempts at including Korean hearts and gestures. One second they look excited, the next their face drops revealing their true feelings. The MCs are literally inside Namjoon. In fact, they are Namjoon, but they're also very much a reflection of his lived experience in the outside world. As they introduce Aram's performance, the stage is a maze where Namjoon stands in the middle. The song begins and another one pops up, then two more, and these visuals immediately recall symbolism that we already saw in the past. The maze, for instance, is not only an imagery that BTS used as a metaphor for life and its twists and turns, but it's also a common symbol used in the theories of Carl Jung, who is also the psychoanalyst analyst that first conceptualized the map of the saw. According to Jung, the labyrinth is a primordial image that can be seen as a representation of the unconscious mind, and in many respects this is a type of labyrinth where the more you lose yourself, the more you find yourself. This is because the labyrinth is also a symbol of the individuation, which is the process of you realizing yourself and finding your true potential. In very simple words, for you to become the best version of yourself, you kind of have to do some soul searching. You have to dive deep into the underworld of yourself, confront your shadows, and eventually become self-aware about every aspect of who you are. The entire Map of the Soul series was a musical adaptation of this process, and in Lost, Aram's journey has a very similar structure. After all, the song is about a time of his life where he felt lost and didn't know who he was. In the Mini and Money music show, he explained that as the leader of BTS, he often felt overwhelmed by his role in the group. People expect him to always say the right thing, they want him to speak up, to represent, to embody the values at the core of his music, but also of his culture. Being an idol is already hard enough. Being a member of BTS adds another layer of pressure because in many respects they transcended that genre. But being the leader of BTS is a burden that only Namjoon can understand and that sometimes felt impossible to bear. It's like his public persona swallowed him up and chewed him out. Namjoon sees himself as an unimportant dude from Korea, but at times Aram the leader of BTS was expected to achieve world peace, and I mean this literally. The idea that Namjoon has of himself is extremely different from how the public perceives him, so as an album, Right Place Wrong Person seeks to relieve his pain and let go of some of this pressure. In Growing, for instance, he straight up says that he's not a fucking diplomat, and the only thing that he can represent is ultimately himself. In Lost, though, Namjoon is still very much trapped in his persona, so while on a superficial level he does his duty and performs on stage, he also goes on a trip in the deepest corners of his mind. In A Great Transition, for instance, we see that the Namjoon at the center of the labyrinth ends up in an elevator going down a dark void. Once again, this imagery is very Carl Jung coded, if you will, because according to him, the labyrinth is a symbol that psychologically can be compared to a descent to the underworld. Metaphorically speaking, Namjoon is getting lost in the underworld of himself, and his goal is to find a way out. In this context, finding the exit means to find a solution to his lostness. It means to find the right path for himself, but also to find himself in the process. In the video, we see that Namjoon is not alone in this journey, because his companions are Aram, 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 and most importantly, Aram. To be honest, the first time I watched the video, I actually thought that this might represent the archetypes. We have Namjoon at the center being the self, and then the others being the persona, the shadow, the anima, and the ego. Actress Stephanie Eugene however, actually confirmed that all of them were playing the role of Namjoon's personas, and in hindsight this makes a lot of sense. The persona is how people perceive us, and people perceive a Ram in very different ways. Stephanie herself, for instance, is the sad Ram, the one that most likely wrote Mono. Audrey Kang played the role of 
of overconfident Taram, the one that always knows what to do and has a lot of self-love. He Shin played the role of fearful Aram, the one that has anxiety and is always worried about everything. And last but not least, we have David H. Lee, who played the role of goofy Aram. This one represents the chaotic side of Namjoon, the king of destruction, but also the more childlike side of himself. The fact that this entire cluster of people symbolizes his persona is very significant here, because it really shows how well developed his persona is. Namjoon might be lost inside of himself, but his persona never leaves him. Even if it's multifaceted, it's there. It's the only part of him that is consistent with what we know about him. Back in Map of the Soul, he represented the persona, and even then he didn't know who he was beyond the realm. In real life, he very much embodies the persona of the group, because he's the leader and the spokesperson, and even in the video itself, his journey takes place during a live performance, so when his persona is in charge. The persona is overwhelmingly present, and maybe that's precisely the reason why he feels so lost. In the elevator, we see that the possible directions to take are endless here. Some of them are nowhere, pure do. Then we have the button for the toilet, one directing us to 42. This one I think is a reference to the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, because in that book, 42 is the ultimate question of life, the universe and everything. As for the last number, I'm sorry to say, but I have no clue about what it means. I tried to decipher it in every way I could think of, but the answer is that I have no answer, which I don't know, maybe it's exactly the point. Either way, the elevator eventually leads the RMs to one of the levels of this mind labyrinth, and from this level we get the sense of what it actually looks like. In the underworld instead of a RAM, the mind maze is developed on different planes, and it's designed like an office space where endless Namjoons do their own thing. We see him working, tending to plants, goofing around. We see the archive, him recreating the Spider-Man meme, him hanging out at the edge of the abyss. While in the lyrics he sings about going to the club and feeling free, inside Namjoon is stuck at work with his personas as his only companions to find the exit. I think the video as a whole could almost be seen as a metaphor for him getting lost instead of his job. Namjoon and his personas are all wearing suits, there are employees lost inside of an office environment they seemingly cannot escape. While Aram is performing, inside he is lost in the corporate aspect of his work, which, if you think about it, is the one that requires him to rely so much on his persona. Being a singer is not what traps him, being a perfect employee and a corporate representative is what does, and the worst thing about it is that there seems to be no exit from this situation. Towards the end, the personas eventually decide to help Namjoon escape through the vents, but as he climbs back up from the underworld of himself, he pops back up on the lost show. This is the Namjoon that Aram saw right before his performance, so what we saw here is a cycle with no beginning and no end. This is a me who has literally come back to me, which connects us right back to the themes of that song. Namjoon explained that come back to me ends the album because this is a story of cycles. In a life full of contradictions, you want stability when you wander, but you also want to wander when you get stability, so it's an endless loop. In the same way, I think the lost circles back to the beginning because through music he got lost, and through music he finds himself again. He gets lost in his work, but he also uses his work to find the parts that he lost. As Namjoon ends his performance, the personas eventually turn to us. They look at us because we are also part of this journey, even if as spectators, after which the credits roll, which might also be a nod to the track with the same subject matter. When the credits roll, do you hang tight or do you leave? Do you stay until the end, maybe hoping for something more, or do you go off to live your life, letting go of what you just saw? Whether you're one or the other, Namjoon is grateful for your time, and if you got to this point of the video, so am I. For now though, this is all I have for you, but let me know what you think in the comments down below, and if you enjoyed this video, please think about liking and subscribing. As always, thank you so much for watching guys, I'll see you next time, bye bye!